Welcome to Resource Prepping. I'm your host, Greg. Please continue to like, subscribe, and refer to this channel. I certainly appreciate you. I look forward to reading all your insightful comments. They are wonderful. And uh, as long as we can keep them polite and in English, we have no problem. And I certainly do thank you. Had a conversation with a man I never met before yesterday. And it started out just a casual, hey, how you doing and everything else? Are you paying attention to the news? Are you watching the economy? Which led into, are you a survivalist, a prepper, whatever you want to call yourself? And I said, yeah, I certainly am. And he says, well, my wife and I, we just started. And this gentleman's probably in his mid to late 30s. And he says, well, we're just started. We, we've gotten concerned about it. And we're starting to save up food. And I said, well, that's a good start. You're ahead of 80 to 90% of the uh, people out there. And he goes, how long have you been doing it? And I said, oh, long, long time, long time. 20 years and he says well do you have any tips and I said sure I'll help you first off determine you know where you want to be in a day a week a month as far as your food your water your shelter and your protection and he says, right away, he goes, I can't have any guns. I live in an apartment, and we have young child. And I said, okay. And he says, do you have any alternatives? I said, well, I said, I would look at fixed blade knives. I prefer a six-inch blade. Other people may think they're Jim Bowie and go with a Bowie knife. Other people are fine with a four-inch blade. I said, I like a fixed full shank blade if you cannot have a gun. But keep in mind... If I'm 10 feet from you, you cannot clear six feet before I pull the trigger. And he says, understood. He goes, what about baseball bats? Again, these are all standoff weapons that stand no chance against a long gun or a handgun in the vicinity. So be prepared for that. And he says, well, I have to do what I do. And I said, a baseball bat would be great. Wooden or aluminum makes no difference as long as you know how to do it. But the priority is safety. And if you can escape, run and hide, I certainly would do that before you're going to stand there and take one for the team and not recover. And he goes, uh, and I said, how about, you know, a longbow? And he says, well, you know, I don't know. We can look at that. And I said, well, a crossbow, nobody's going to dodge that bullet traveling 3,000 feet per second on the newer ones. However... You have to have a pulley to cock it, and you're going to take a shot. You know, you may get a shot off every one to two minutes, and by that time, you're long gone. Longbow, again, you could be good for 60 to 80 feet and shoot more than once. However, you know, again, you have to practice. So take that into account. And he says, I'll take notes on that and look for it. And I said, whatever, whatever you do, practice. Get proficient at it. Know what you're doing. A knife can be taken away from you in a heartbeat and used against you, and you'll be huh, you'll be really surprised how quickly. As far as food goes, if you're saying there's three of you, which he was indicating there was, two adults and a young child, I said, think about it. You're going to be using right now between two and 2,500 calories per person per day. Under stress, that will go up to three to 4,000. And if you're just stocking ramen noodles, which is basically empty calories, unless you add something with that, uh, you're defeating the purpose. So buy the food that you like, as much of it as you like, and don't bust your budget. And he goes, well, how are you doing that? And I said, listen, buy one, get one free, you know, sale ads. The time of this inflation Man, I'll tell you what, you need every nickel and dime you can get. So buy one, get one free, BOGO ads, uh, coupons, just cherry picking the ads, getting what the food you like that will be long term. I like MREs, but they have gotten so ridiculously expensive now. And the reason I like MREs is you can eat them hot or cold, and it doesn't depend on water to eat, whereas dehydrated food or uh, 
freeze dried food. Some freeze dried food like fruits and everything else and making apple chips and banana chips, that's fine. But to have a full meal, generally you have to have water. And if you don't have water, you don't eat dehydrated or freeze dried, generally speaking. Canned foods, if you can afford it, stock up on stuff that can be eaten, consumed right out of the can. Ravioli, SpaghettiOs, soups, that type of issue. Beans, that type of issue. Stock up on that. I said, what about water? And he says, well, we're buying our water, but we don't have near enough. And I said, well, how about parents? Do you have any parents living not in an apartment? And he goes, yeah, my, my parents. And he says, they have their own home. I said, well, is it possible that you could get an IBC tote? And would they allow you to fill it up with water and store it out on their property? I said, are they in the preparedness? He goes, yeah, they're, they're starting that too. And I said, well, then you can have mutual assistance with your family. Saying, okay, I'll buy the tote. You fill up with your water and store it that way. Combine your effort. If you can't afford it, maybe they can. Work with each one another. Talk to one another your family members and say, I can't afford this, can you? Maybe we can go halves on a steer or a pig or a sheep or something like that. If someone, because he lives in an apartment, if someone can raise chickens in their backyard and they are allowed to make the offer. Hey, I'll buy the chickens. If we can secure them in your backyard, the benefit will be we'll have meat and eggs We'll share, you know, barter, work things out, talk to one another. The one thing I did recommend is, listen, security, water, food, and shelter. And I said, if you're going to do that, have a plan. Sit down with your wife and say, what can we realistically afford on our budget? Can we store it in our house safely? Can we store it at parents' house safely? What is our budget? What are we preparing for? And how realistic can we get there? And that was my advice to them, and I'm really glad to hear it. There are other people asking me the same questions, and my answer is the same. And I told this gentleman, and I told other people as well. First off, all of them said, you know, I, I was trying to talk to people about being prepared and what's going on, they look at me like I got, you know, a third eye in the middle of my forehead and, and you know, strange gross all over my face. And I just started laughing and said, yeah, I've been there, done that. You know, the tinfoil hat conspiracy nut job that thinks the sky's falling every minute and will believe everything. And you're one of those kooks that say that they have to live underground for the rest of their life to avoid Armageddon. And he goes, yeah, pretty much it. And I said, well, don't talk about it. Don't inform your neighbors what you're going to do unless they breach the subject to you. And then on a limited basis, do you discuss it? Well, what's your idea? What do you think you're, you know, what's your plans? What do you think you're going to do? What's the direction? You know, be inquisitive, but don't give out information. And it will take practice. And just like I've told several people, these are the people that will make fun of you to your face and behind your back. But these will be the first people that will come knocking at your door, hat in hand saying, yeah, we didn't believe you, but now we do. Can you feed us? Can you take us in? Can you, can you, can you? Zip the lip. No one outside your immediate prepping family gets to know what you're doing and then on a limited basis. That will be a hard lesson learned, which I learned a long time ago. Because people that may be your friends now, 15 years later, may not be your friends. And will rat you out in a heartbeat for a bowl of soup. You just keep that in mind. A whole lot of different things, but food will be a priority. You have to eat. You have to have water. You have to have clean water. I recommended some books, magazines, different things. And you know what goes around comes around. Years ago when Doomsday Prepper was on National Geographic and I was intrigued by that, by seeing other people 
with like minds because I thought I was alone in the wilderness. The missus wanted nothing to do with this. We started watching it, and she's just like, that person's a kook. That's a nut. That'll never happen. Now, 10 years later, they're repeating the doomsday preppers, and suddenly she's sitting right there saying, that's a good idea. We never thought of that. You should write that down. And out of those doomsday preppers, the angry prepper has his channel. Uh, Pastor Joe Fox with Viking Preparedness came out of that as well. So there are notable people that have shared their experiences and uh, have grown pretty uh, active and famous in the prepping world with their channels and such like that. My reasoning is, listen, I just want to survive. I want to be able to eat. I want to provide food and nutrition for my family and friends, security and safety. That's my goal. If you have any other questions or comments, please let me know. If you want to talk to me without leaving a comment, erieshoresprepping at gmail.com. That's erieshoresprepping at gmail.com. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to send you an email and reply. You know, don't send any attachments. I won't open them. I don't need any viruses or anything else. Straightforward question. Thank you for liking and subscribing. I certainly do appreciate you. Uh, this is a little bit long, but there's a lot of people asking a lot of questions. So we're going to start from the beginning and keep going forward. As always, get yourself right with God. Repent of your sins. Do it daily. Get yourself submerged in water, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Greg out.